we've been looking at decision structures and you know, making code more modular with functions and using loops and repetition structures. And this is just another quick, you know, kind of fun or entertaining project that you can do. So in NetBeans, I just built myself an interface. Um, you know, this is a J applet forum. And on the interface, I've, I've put some swing components. So here's a J text area and a J scroll pane. And here are some text fields. I'll use this for output like I did the console and the console version. Here I'll count the correct guesses, the wrong guesses, and the number that I'm guessing for. This is a J text field I'll use for input, J button. These are some J radio buttons. They'll be used to set the range uh, or a difficulty level. Um, and you know, again, these are just some J labels with borders. So that's what the interface looks like. And here we've split it up. Instead of looping, having nested for loops, this is event based. So in the console version where you had an outer for loop, um, you know, that was counting up different random numbers, and then you had an inner for loop inside of it that was giving three guesses for each of those numbers, so that every time the outer loop looped once, the inner loop would loop three times. This is completely different, because when you have a graphical interface, you always start designing your, your interface first. And once you design the GUI, that affects how you code the rest of the program to deal with it. So, uh, and also, it will be event-based, you know, in, instead of... Uh, you know, a console-based program or, you know, a more linear program. So instead of looping, we're going to be listening for events. And what we'll do is we're going to implement an interface known as Action Listener. Action Listener will listen for events, okay? And it'll be on this button right here, so Action Performed will handle it, and it will transmit an action event every time that button is clicked. And based on that one event, we will kind of split our, our program up into different functions and chunks of code. So let's look at the very first thing that happens. What happens, the player clicks on the guess button. So when that happens, this is the event handler here. And you know all you have to do to add an event handler, there'll, there'll be more tutorials on how to do this, but specifically you just right click events and say action performed uh, in NetBeans, pretty easy. If you were doing this in Notepad, you would actually have, you know, just write an action performed and up here you would say implementing you know, interface action listener or implementing action listener. Um, but you know, NetBeans makes it convenient, kind of does that for us. So in here, just a Boolean. If it's a new game, everything between these two braces, see how they're highlighted in yellow, will happen. So if our radio, radio buttons are selected, it will change the range. Easy is between 1 and 5. Uh, normal is between 1 and 100, a little bit more challenging. And difficult is between 1 and 1,000, you know, a lot more challenging. And it'll just you know, we need to tell the player what to do. So um, you, you must guess a number from the minimum and the maximum. One, in this case, we'll do easy so we can you know, easily guess it. It'll be five. We need to turn that Boolean off, and that way the next time they trigger the event, the next time they click this button, this whole block will be missed. It won't happen. And instead, the else down here will happen. Okay, so we turn that off. We will set the guess. You know, this is the current guess they're guessing. They get three guesses per number, three separate numbers. And then we need to make our first random number. And that's what's happening here. So we're using the you know a random object. RND is a random object, so making a number between in this case, if I pick easy, it's going to be between five and one. And that'll be stored in or assigned to the number being guessed. And at that point our program's just going to sit there and wait um, and not do anything until the next event gets triggered. And I'm going to go ahead and run it, and we'll go through the code and run it at the same time. So I'll run it in NetBeans, and here's the interface, what the interface looks like. And so the first time through, I click this. And when I do that, this Boolean here, new game, is true. And so all this happens. And so whatever, you know, in this case, easy was selected by default. It was the default selection of my button group. So it's between 1 and 5. Sets it up, it makes the random number, and it tells me I, I need to guess a number between 1 and 5, min and max. Okay, and then it sets it up here as well. Um, I'm, ma I'm making guess number 1 for number 1. So number 1, and I'm making the guess, the very first guess on it. So I'm going to go ahead and put in a number into the J text field, and then it's just sitting there waiting for the next event. Well, the next event is when I click guess. It'll trigger an action event and go look for the event handler action performed. So what happened? Uh, I, I put a 3 in there. And when I put a 3 in there and I clicked it again, this whole block of code was skipped, and now this block of code gets executed. A number starts out as 1, so it is less than or equal to 3, so it's going to go call make a guess. And we just kind of split this into modular functions, so and make a guess, it comes down here, and, and now what happens? Well, we're going to set the text uh, on the number box for the current number we're guessing. We're guessing for number one, and we've already made our first guess. We, we didn't get it. 
Okay, and then I need to get the text from the text field. Now the problem is anything coming from a J text field, uh, it comes to us as a string, and I can't really do a comparison or math on a string. So I've got to convert it. I need to use my parse functions. So there's integer parse int, double parse double, um, you know, float parse float, but in this case I need to convert it. It's just a simple integer. So I have to take that string, convert it to an integer, assign it to x, and now I can actually do something with it, do some comparisons. And I split this into functions to make it easier to follow, to make it more modular. So really, this decision structure is, okay, they get guesses one and two, and then the third guess is their last guess. So this is only going to happen for the very first two guesses. And then at this point, it's going to go call check number. And then otherwise, this block down here will get executed, and then finally it's going to update the guess and then I need to catch it you know the reason is what if when I'm parsing it he types in banana he doesn't type in an actual number if I didn't try and catch it then that would just crash you know it would throw a number format exception and that would crash the program so I do need to try and catch that you just you know to kind of bulletproof it a little bit not completely bulletproof but at least if the you, you know the player types in banana or some craziness um, and not a number we can handle that down here in this catch block Okay, so very first time through, it went and it called check number, and I put in three, and let's see what check number does. It just, there's three logic states that are possible. It's either greater than, it's less than, or it's equal to. And I'm just going to display that in the JText field, and I'll either increment wrong guesses or increment correct guesses based on whether they get it wrong or right. I want to update the text boxes, and since they're labels, I need to convert them to a string. By the way, there's another fun way you can do this. You can use integer to string, and I could also do this put this in here and notice it's going to tell me that it's going to tell me that that's wrong but if I do this and concatenate a string it's an interesting little trick in Java but so you can either use the toString function or if you do this and use concatenation to build a string it will also convert it um, I prefer the two strings so I'm just going to throw that back in there okay so um, in this case what happened I put in three the number is smaller than that so this condition was met. In this case, the random number generated, um, it is less than what I put in, which is three. Okay, so I'm gonna go back, and now it's just sitting there, it's waiting for the next event. You know, at that point, it, it skips the else if, and it skips the else, and it goes back to, let's move it back over here. It was called from make a, a guess, and it's going to increment guesses per number. So that was my first guess, now I'm on my second guess. Okay, and then it will update the form um, accordingly. And that's down here, it's just updating that label on the form. So now I'm on my second guess. So you can see right here I'm on my second guess, still on number one. I know that it's smaller than that, that's a clue, so I, three, I'm gonna try two. Um, so two, and then I did it, I guessed the number. So at this point, let's let's see what happens. So again, I, I trigger the event, which means I go back up here, and we're looking at messages or events firing off. This is going to be skipped until the end of the game or until I start a new game, so this is always going to happen. Well, number is less than or equal to 3, and in this case, my current number is 2. So I'm, I'm still going to call, you know, trigger this event. It's going to go call the make a guess function. Gets to make a guess, what's it going to do? It's going to update the number. Well, that was set reset. So now I'm, I made my first guess in this case for the second number. And when I made my first guess for the second number, okay, what happened when I when I, you know, clicked it, the event handler and actually perform calls make a guess. It's going to get the text that's going to convert it to a number. In this case my guesses are definitely less than three, so it's again it's going to go call check number. Okay? And so we're going to skip down to the check number function. And what happened? I guessed the number um, the number was 2, and in this case, you know, I went down and, and I entered a 2, so this condition was skipped, and this condition was skipped, and now down here, um, you guessed my number. And let me go over here, and you guessed my number. And just, to, you know, test it out.